Yes, sir, baby, on the radar radio. Yo, another special guest in the building today. CJ Fly is here with me. What it do? What's up, bro? How you doing? Man, I love today. Today's great. Yeah, I got facts. Nick Caution in the cut over here drinking That's beer. A fact. You're over here drinking water, you know what I'm saying? You know the vibes. I don't fuck with beer, by the way. You know I hate beer, right? You hate beer? Why do you hate beer? I don't know, man. I, I don't drink too much. I know the Budweiser. <laughs> what, wait, Nick, Nick, just said said? Nick said it's racist. So you don't hate beer. Oh, shit. Nah, Racially motivated. <laughs> you know what? It's funny. I did an ad for uh, Red Stripe like a year and a half ago. and you know. Wait, wait. Hold on. Time out. Time, time out. I, you can pick Nick. You hear Nick in the back, right? Wait, so how do you do an ad for Red Stripe and then you say in you... In the back. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, out of I'm, the bag. I'm, right, right, right. But, nah, at the end of the day, Red Stripe was definitely on a list of uh, brands that I wanted to work with uh, in life because I'm Jamaican. Yeah, it's a so cultural thing, too, right. of course, of course. So, you know, when I did the ad, I had to take a sip. It was fine to take a sip, but would I sit and drink one by myself? Maybe not, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm a tequila type of guy, you know what I'm saying? My guy. Yeah, I so. love I love me a good I love me a good tequila soda. Yeah, you know a little, little like, anejo straight sometimes. Something you know straight, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Low calorie too. Right, right. Come on, healthy, bro. healthy alcohol, not the shit that's gonna give me a beer belly and shit. Nah, when I be drinking beer for like three days straight, like on the weekends sometimes with my friends who like to drink beer, yeah. I be like by day three, I'm like, yo guys, yeah, you gotta just yo just just I need some straight up some <laughs> shit, some straight up shit. Even like some like I don't I don't, I don't even say straight up Hennessy because I don't know, but uh, straight up tequila, I tequila definitely I sure. definitely Any need day. that. Anything. Well, I'm excited to have you here, bro. Thanks for having that's me. Not how I, that's not how I expected the interview to start off, but I'm not mad about it because that's actually kind of funny. Not for sure. Wait, hold on, real quick. I just I, I have before I get to anything else. And now I just have this picture of you in my mind, <laughs> of you doing this red stripe commercial. You drinking the beer, them recording it, and they're being like, "Cut!" And you being like, you "Oh no!" It. So what happened was they sent me a, a case of red stripe to the crib, and I had to make an Instagram video. Oh, so this was like on some quarantine shit. Oh, okay. quarantine, quarantine bags. You feel me? So. Thank you. Thank you, Red Stripe. Shout out to Red Stripe, man. Shout out to Red Stripe. Send me Stripes. some more bags whenever y'all ready, you heard? <laughs> <laughs> not you, you fucking not, up my bag. Not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. I drink beer. I was conceived in Jamaica. Tap it with my boy Nick Caution. <laughs> he was conceived in Jamaica. <laughs> Feel me? So, Red Stripe, you need to. You want to come back and do another interview? I didn't know you was conceived in Jamaica. I'm, I'm like the Wizard of Oz. Like, I'm from the Curry that's my That's my, that's my uh, long lost cousin and shit. Conceived in Jamaica is mad. Walk, walk. <laughs> <laughs> That's my next stop. I was gonna <laughs> coming soon. Well, I should just had y'all both do an interview today. I should done a joint, another joint interview. But um, man, I forgot where the fuck I was even going with this shit now too. You, you fucking threw I'm, me I'm off. Heckling. I'm heckling. He's definitely he- <laughs> he's he's heckling the shit out of this interview. Um, so oh, quarantine bags. All right. So was that like? Were there other like kind of like odd like job things that you had to do during quarantine or that you cop like quarantine bags from? Was there anything else? That you mm. did? That was like the rest right thing? PPP. No, I'm just kidding. I ain't doing no PPP. <laughs> Yo, bro, I said no fessing on On The Radar, bro. We don't fess on On The Radar. We don't nah, do that nah, here. Nah, nah, nah. Don't worry. My company did not do, do, do any of that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shout out to all my brothers that's not in jail right now, though. That's just crazy. But yo, uh, yeah, man, you know... Shout out to Instagram. Instagram made it possible for us, some of us to work from home and be able to get bags from the crib during quarantine. You know what I mean? And, and Twitch. Yes. Twitch was definitely a fucking... A way to get a bag. Work from home bag. What? Mm-hmm. Shout outs to the whole Twitch team. You know what I mean? I haven't been on Twitch since my baby been born, but I'm going to be back real soon. You know what I mean? New baby. New baby. New baby. One and only. One and only. Shout out to my son. <laughs> How you feeling? Oh, man. It's the most amazing thing that I've ever created. You know, I'm a, I'm a great musician, so I make a lot of great songs, but my baby is my best collaboration yet. Mm, I love that. Yeah. How's being a dad kind of change your outlook on everything? Oh, man. Being a dad is amazing, bro. Like, you know, prior to having my son, I was, like, very self-motivated to, you know, make it and and do great things. But, like, now I'm like, damn, I really need to do some historic stuff so my son can say, wow, my dad is really cool and did some really dope things on this earth, you know what I mean, with his time. Mm -hmm. So it's important for me to leave a great legacy and set a great example for him so he knows that he can chase his dreams and be able to do anything that he wants to, you know what I mean? I love that. Has sure. like having what has it opened your eyes to anything else besides that? Like I mean, just even other people kids, you know what I'm saying? Like I used to honestly not want to be a role model and now that I have my son, I'm like I need to be very mindful of the energy I put out into the universe, mm-hmm. the music, the words that I'm using, the 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 manifestations that are coming from my lyrics, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it's definitely changed the way I create in the way i view everything in life you know what i'm saying from right. music to visuals and how i present myself to the world you know what i mean i feel like it, what, I, what being a public figure you end up kind of also just like 
not forcibly, but like becoming a role model. You know what no, I'm saying? For sure. To a lot of people. Like obviously there was a lot of kids who listened to your music, you know right. what I'm saying? And like that affected them. No, for sure. Way too. People hit me all the time, be like, yo, prayer changed my life and it was like my religion and all types of other stuff. So it's like it's beautiful to be influential on that level and you know, we, we didn't plan to be influential, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of kids that started their spiritual journey from listening to, to our music growing up, and I'm honored to be able to enlighten the youth, you know what I mean? Right, right. No, I definitely, I, yeah, I definitely think that that has, like, when it comes to the music, you know what I'm saying? Like like you said, like, even to this day, like, I have I have friends who, who first of all, they, they, they love Pro Air. They grew up in that time from, like, the West Coast, too. Right. Like, they talk about it. Like, one of my boys, he bought, like, a, a copy of, like, 1999, mm -hmm. and he, like, and I went over to his apartment. He's like, look what I just bought. It's, like, my favorite album, blah, blah, <laughs> this, this, and that. And he was, right. like, playing it. I'm like, and I'm like, damn, man, like, it's so crazy, like, the impact that y'all had, you know? Right, man. It's, it's, it's talking about impact. It's, it's wild, the amount of rappers that are famous that have hit me or come to me when they see me be like yo bro you don't even know i wouldn't exist without y'all and like that shit is mind-blowing to me because like i said we wasn't doing it for that reason we were just doing it to express ourselves and right. being the brooklyn kids we were and you know for us to influence the next generation of stars is beautiful bro and i'm mad proud of everybody doing anything you know what i'm saying do you have like because i know like this year is like what it's it's like 10 years since like 1999 and like uh, the beginnings of a lot of those things mm -hmm. right is there like a core memory for you that sticks out when you when you reflect on your time in those early days of of, of creating something while n also not planning on it being becoming what it what it was is there like a core memory that sticks out to you oh man um what like one in particular just even us creating our debut mixtapes is like a mm -hmm. mind-boggling thought like we were in Times square and premiere studios like we had the whole studio to ourselves you know what i'm saying we're creating different projects these is creating american corruption I'm creating fucking the way I see it. Joey just finished putting out 1999. It's like a lot of dope energy stewing up. So it's like that studio and being at the studio where where Pac got shot in the elevator is like mm. crazy energy. You know what I'm saying? So just being there a lot was definitely very memorable. You know what I mean? That was like our mecca and we was creating crazy in there. You know what I mean? So mm. many. You want to hear a crazy story? I remember once I was making a song for the way I see it and... uh. I'm about to name drop. I never name drop. <laughs> and I had to stop recording for a second because a very well-known and big artist had to come play a song. Mm -hmm. Kendrick. Okay. Kendrick came in and played a different version of Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe before it came out. The Mad Execs came in the motherfucker. I was like, what the fuck? You saw all the suits came in. You're like, what is Mad going on here? Mad motherfuckers is in here. I'm, I'm like, what? The? They're like, yo, we just need to hear this version of this song. And the version of the song was Lady Gaga on it. Okay. Damn. And I was like... What? Like, I had no, like, I'm making my own mixtape for the first time. I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get on. Mm. And I already met Kendrick back in the day from that time. But, like, just to see him come in and play that song, it was just, like, mind-blowing. And then to see where that song is went and where Kendrick is now. Right. Mind-blowing. She was on, like, what, like, a hook? Or she was trying to think, like, she sung Oh, it is the on words. the internet? I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever heard it. Oh, she was the one it's, singing it's it. It's on YouTube. I don't think I've ever heard that version of it. It's <laughs> Nick, 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 Nick Lady Gaga, in the back. I love it's you. Not good. <laughs> Lady Gaga, I love you. I did not disrespect you on here. JP from Power 105.1 and On the Radar did not disrespect you. How I, Nick, Nick Caution, aka, aka Lil yeah. Nick on the on the next album. That's what we're called. <laughs> Lil Nicky, Lil Nicky. Yeah, he did. Yeah, man, he disrespected you. That that right there was super memorable moment. I got more memories, but you're gonna have to wait till my my book come out. My memoirs. <laughs> are you writing? Are you actually writing a book? Will you ever write a one book? One day, one day. You know what I mean? One thing at a time. I want to do a children's book now that I have a son. So oh, I'm going to work on one of those. Be on the lookout for that. And um, in the meantime, between time, I'm just going to stick to the music because the music is going to help fuel everything else. You know what I mean? I always wonder how like adults write children's books, right? Like, How do you get yourself in the mindset of like a child to like do something like that? You know, well, that's what I be thinking about that. So like every morning, I read my son at least five to ten books because we on some scholar shit over here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so... Right. Honestly, after reading and doing like research and seeing what he responds to, I feel like it's going to be easier for me to go from there. I already wrote something, but I'm like, I feel like it's not for his age group. Like the story that I already wrote was like about uh, a young me exploring New York. 
You know what I mean? Right. That's definitely more like nine, ten. Exactly. My son is one years old. He's like, he's not gonna know what the hell I'm talking about. I'm talking about fucking going on the train. He's like, what? We don't take the train. We drive everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's like yeah. certain things gotta click. But you know, I think it's mainly about understanding what ch children want to hear and see. You know what I'm saying? My son is in a very visual state, so I put a lot of visual like bright colors fruits you know what i'm saying animals because that's what he loves right now so depending on the age group you gotta you know what i mean do your research and see what your audience actually is you know what i mean hmm. that's very interesting well now we can finally get to the, the music uh <laughs> Farrell's return is out now ep yes. out now um and it's do you feel like this is your return like why the pharaoh's return oh man the pharaoh's return because honestly i've always connected with uh, Egyptian culture like mm -hmm. I've been told multiple times too by like uh, you know people in the spiritual community and people in the comedic community that I resemble pharaohs and I have pharaohs in my, my past life and my ancestry line you know what I mean so I definitely <laughs> wanted to kind of tap in on that and show love to the ancestors by doing that project but like I feel like you know it's like the return of a king and you know what I mean royalty coming mm -hmm. back to claim the throne so mm -hmm. That's why I like the Pharaoh's Return. I feel like I took a lot of time off prior to Rude Boy, and, you know, it's time for me to be more consistent and come through with more music and more content for everybody. So this is the beginning. And that was just part one, by the way. Oh, that was just part Because I was about to say, it's compared to the other projects that you dropped last year and even before that, mm -hmm. it's kind of short. No, songs. for sure. Yeah. That was just part one. Shout out to Nasty Loves You. He produced that. Uh, we're working on part two as we speak. You know what I'm saying? So. And it's going to be called the Pharaoh's Return part. Too. Yes. So you mentioned like the gap, right? Because I was I was even gonna I was even thinking about that earlier when I was like looking at your discography, right? Because right. I want to get them. I want to make sure I get the the years right. So right. there was Fly Trap and mm -hmm. then Rude Boys. So there was a four year gap in between. Right. Right. What was going on with you in those four years? Like, what were you kind of going through that made you not want to put out like a a new project? Oh man, it was a lot, man. You know, I was growing into the person I am today. Relationships, you know, moving from home to home. Like as far as where I was, I used to live in a different space than I live now. So like. You know, I was just trying to figure out my life and what I wanted to do with myself. And the whole time I was creating, but I never put a body of work together. You know what I mean? Mm. So between the years of 2016 and 2020, there's like 100 songs that exist. Really? no projects came out because a lot of different shit. Like, I didn't want people to fucking listen to some of my autotune song shit at the time. <laughs> Dumb shit, like my singing songs, my gal tunes, my reggae music. So I got, I got mad different type of sounds. I just want to present them properly. I don't want to just, you know what I mean, slop some shit together and be like, yo, here's my project and people don't fuck with it. You know what I mean? So I want to put a lot of good thought and um, take my time with it so I can actually put together a good body of work. You know what I mean? Mm, so that was kind of what you were going through in the... Yeah. And then 2020 hit and you just put on the pedal. Yeah, me and Static was working on um, Rude Boy since about mm, 2018. Okay. So like the, one of the first songs that was made was... Uh, city we from with conway because static had the griselda boys at the studio for the block bushwick block party mm. and he was like yo pull up that's i love static shout out to static selector mm. every time somebody come to town static be like yo let's tap in with cj it could be bun b paul wall <laughs> you know what i'm saying static hit me up be like yo come let's do a song and i'm always there front and center I drive my car over there and we get the work done so you know what I mean? He was like, yo, I got this beat. And I was like, yo, see if you can get Conway on this. And Conway spit the verse then and there. And then I laid my shit after they left. So, you know what I mean? Shout out to Static. He definitely got me back in my bag. I wanted to do a project that the core fans would appreciate. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like I have a lot more to prove on the rapping side. So that album right there was like, all right, cool. Let me put some foundation down so you guys know like, CJ Fly is not to be fucked with. Word. I like that. That's a good explanation of that too. For sure. And and we were talking a little bit before about your album covers, right? Right. So there's so now what you're expecting doesn't have your face on it. Right. <laughs> and I you want to put your face on it. Even though it came out a year ago. I do, but you know what? There are I some like the cover albums. though. Yeah, I like it. It's like it's a metaphor too. If you if you look closely, like it's a hand reaching towards this light of the sun. And what did I just have? A sun. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If you look in the back cover, you got the um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's like this hieroglyphic of hands coming from the sun, reaching downward, you know what I mean? That's so tight. I like that. It's, it's like a metaphor at the same time. This is me going into fatherhood. I'm reaching towards my son, and I'm also, uh, you know what I mean, tapping into my roots and trying to step into my light, you know what I mean? That's interesting. So then what, so, okay, so does the way I see it have like a... Like something with the like explain to me they explain to me the concept behind that thing because <laughs> I'm interested I, to find out like the concept behind oh, no, all that. No, the concept behind everything. I don't I don't ever just create 
uh, things randomly with no meaning or depth behind it. Right. The way I see it was supposed to be a movie being projected from my brain to the world. Mm. That's why you see the, the light coming out of my eyes and me sitting in the theater. Basically, my eyes are going to be projecting the film onto the screen for everybody else to watch, which is the music. Oh, That's why shit. it's called The Way I See It. That's and then tough. my beat tape, the way I hear it, right. the light's coming out of my ears now because you're hearing what I'm producing now. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So trying to play on those those, those uh, themes, you know what I mean? Damn, that's tough. That's yeah, hopefully I'll put out a recipe book called The Way I Taste It. <laughs> the Way I Taste It. The Way I... Ooh. See, look, Nick, Nick, Nick in the corner drinking beer. He getting, hung, he getting hungrier. <laughs> or an OnlyFans. Only, or, you want to ask that question? You want to make an OnlyFans? What would you call an OnlyFans that would that would match the... The, the way I stroke it. I got it. Actually, so it's nah, funny. I'm done. It's funny he said. It's, 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 it's funny. Not. It's funny he says that. I have I a song it. that's called, that's coming soon. It's called the way I hit it. Oh, see, the, the way I hit. Ooh. Just know, just know, it's for the gallum. You know what I mean? The gallum gonna love that one. <laughs> it's a vibe. It's a vibe. You rapping on it? I'm rapping on it. I'm talking that sexy shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> talking about how I be digging out gallum belly. Yo, yeah. I need yo. Can we get Nick a mic so I can just like have him ad lib in the back? <laughs> Could you hear any of his ad libs like right there? No, you don't actually have to do it. But like, do you do you hear like the whoa? My, my my boy said, "Damn." <laughs> yeah, he he in the, he in the back like, "Damn." It's, heckling. It's, it's like a live whoa. comedy show. I'm just in the crowd. Heckling. Oh no, I appreciate whoa. it. I appreciate the energy always, my brother. But like, in, so in 2021, you dropped three projects, right? That, that was, uh, that's tough. Did I? Yeah. I yes, think you I did. did. Yes, you did. Let's go back. Let's go back to the drawing board. The beat. Yeah, you had the beat tape. Mm -hmm. Now what you're expecting, and then the well, way the I way see I see it. it came out in 2013. I meant to actually fix that. I re-released it on oh. DSPs for the first Still time. Release. Still in your so, release. Yeah, I basically put out three projects. I basically put out four, but I didn't put out my my self-produced EP how I was supposed to. Mm, okay. Um, Silver Lining. That's a project I made for the baby before the baby was born. Right. And that was my first time producing my um, my own song. So. I was supposed to put that out with the instrumentals, and I think I just got caught up with the baby being born and never did it. But I will do it one day. One so, day one day that'll come yeah, out. Yeah, so basically four, but three. <laughs> you said what, you said that that project had to do with something? What, with Silver Lining? Yeah, with the baby? Yeah, basically it was dedicated to the baby. You okay, know what I mean? I made, it, I made it right before the baby got uh, was born, and mm -hmm. it was just inspired by everything going on, my baby moms, the whole process, you know what I mean? The whole process. Facts, facts. I never, you know, okay, I know we talked about the baby, but yeah. like I never really ever ask this question Go ahead. nine months like obviously nine months like going into this right like what is going through your head throughout those nine months uh make sure my girl stays fed okay and <laughs> <laughs> make sure my girl save as much money as possible and make sure i prepare my mental to be strong for you know whatever is ahead prepare my mental fortitude because we ended up having a home birth Oh, wow. Because it was the pandemic. We wasn't trying to go to the hospital. They wasn't even letting me into her fucking midwife uh, visits when she was going to the doctor to hear the sonogram and shit. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? We was like, let's just, just do a home birth. We were like in the crib like this, pool right on the carpet. Just two of you? Uh, her mom was there, and we had a midwife and a nurse. Okay, so there was a... Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't sure how that worked. Yeah. No, for sure. And then usually the, the husband is standing outside of the pool with the with their uh, baby moms and... My girl was like, no, you're getting in this pool with me. You got in the pool? I was in the pool. She was sitting <laughs> on my lap. She pushed him out. That's and crazy. I was like, yo, I ain't going to cry. I ain't going to cry. I'm a G. And then I seen him pop out. He just floated out. <laughs> I'm like, nah, that's my son. Yeah, yeah. So it was the most beautiful thing ever, man. Like, for real. That's I, incredible. I hope everybody gets to experience that. You know what I mean? That's incredible. Thank you, man. Well, Switching, uh, switching, switching gears a little bit. So you have a a game that you've been working on for quite some time. Oh yeah, you know I've been trying to get this game together, but I'm still trying to figure out how to go about um, getting funding. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because games are expensive. Of course, yeah. There's a lot and, of into it. You know, I want to make sure that I get the proper resources and proper, uh, you know, help that I could get to make it the best that I can make it. Because I don't want to do it and it's like ass. Right. I got to do it to the top notch or not do it at all. Is it like so? It's like an eight bit thing, right? Because I, I was watching the video of it on your IG a little bit earlier. Yeah, it's an eight bit thing because I grew up in the era of going to play arcades and shit like uh, Street Fighter, Contra. My favorite game of all time is Galaga and Pac Man. You know nice. what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like I want to go back to that era and you know pay homage to that because I feel like the generation now everything is 3D. Mm -hmm. Everything is like you know actual figures and characters and shit. So the fact that uh, 
you know, 8-bit is like kind of reemerging through NFTs and all this other stuff. I'm like, it's the perfect time right now to, you know what I mean, bring that whole world back. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So that's the goal. Adventures of Fly coming soon. Adventures of Fly. And it's, and it's about you. Yeah, it's about me and it's going to be about other shit going on too. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I don't want to make everything specifically about me, but I'm definitely going to be the lead character in the game. You know what I mean? Right. Right. I love that. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then, so also, the Sopranos film that came out. Yes. So you had a role in this. Saints of Many Saints of Newark. Did did Desi have a role in that yes, too? Yes, Desi, Desi and I both had a role. Yeah, in both that had shit. the role in this. Yes. Okay, yeah, because I remember Desi and I were talking about it not too long ago. Right, right. Uh, so shout out to Pow P. Pow P actually plugged that. Uh, one of his family friends was like, "Yo, they need a, a artist to play one of the last poets. Rest in peace to the last poet. Mm. Uh, I can't remember his specific name, but rest in peace, rest in peace. I know some of them are alive still, but uh, these great spoken word hip hop uh, poetry brothers." And Desi and I had the opportunity of reciting their poem at in the film. You know what I mean? Pardon me. And it's crazy because, like I said, I just came from France, and I'm seeing the movie on the on the man shit. Like that shit is mind blowing to me. A movie that I'm in has been being shown all around the world. Like it's amazing, man. You gonna do more acting too? I would love to, man. I, I need to get me an agent, get me a sad card, get all that good shit. You know what I mean? I'm still independent. Non-union, so have Nick teach you how to act. A little oh, you more. know what I mean. We, we Nick, Nick is a star, so he got to put me on game. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, uh, you know, obviously one of the projects you had my guy Marlon on the uh, on on, on it, friend of the show, long time. He was like right. one of the first, like I think, twenty artists I had on the show when I started in twenty eighteen. How did y'all? How did that connection come about? Shout out to Marlon Craft, man, my boy, um, my boy Dan Dan Edinburgh. Shout out to Dan. He was working with um, Marlon on. Damn, I can't remember the name of the album, but the one with the blue cover and the crossword puzzle, it just came out last oh year. Oh my God, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bother me. I got you, I got yeah, you. Keep telling I'll the story, I got you. I'll be on shit, but my, my boy Dan did a lot of the joints on there, and they was working together. And Dan is an amazing human being. Anytime he works with somebody that, you know, is even familiar of my music or of me, he mentions me, and he's like, yo, you guys are both great people. We should try to work together and do some shit. How so, we intended, that's what it was. Huh? How we intended. Exactly. Amazing project. Make sure you check that out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we connected. I was like, y'all got this joint for you. So, you know, that was just first of many songs. Holla at me, bro. Oh, yeah. Goodbye, Nick. We'll miss your ad libs. <laughs> <laughs> so that was just the first of many um, joints that Marlon and I have done. We're going to do some more of a damn production. and it's Hard. Got a couple other joints coming soon. Shout out to Marlon. Shout out to Marlon. He going he preparing his bars as we speak. That's a fact. Literally. So what else we got coming up? So we got we got part two on the way. Um, what else? What got else some, do people gotta be on the lookout for this year? We got some 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 dope music coming. Me and Coda got some shit coming soon. Shout out Coda the friend. Yes, that's my boy. Shout out to Coda Dad Gang. <laughs> dad but yeah, big dad gang. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Good dad gang. Shout out to shout out to Term. Um, but yeah, man, you know, lots of dope shit. Lots of lots of new music in the works. Um what else is coming? I don't know, man. I'm just gonna keep cooking. You're gonna see a lot of CJ Fly this year and you're probably gonna get annoyed until you 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 know what I mean? See me every day. <laughs> Man, well, look, I appreciate you being here. Congratulations on, on fatherhood. Congratulations on all the success. Uh, congratulations on being back. I'm very happy to have you back. Very Thank happy you. to have you back in the music. Appreciate uh, it. A lot of good shit on the way. Uh, before we sign off here, anything else you want to let the people know where they can follow you at? All that good stuff. This camera right here. Follow me on social media at CJFly underscore. And um, my music, CJ Fly everywhere. You know what I'm saying? YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. Fucking Spotify title, <laughs> all that good shit, man. Tap in with your boy, you heard? Fly! Thank you for having me, bro. Fly, CJ Fly on the radar, my guy. Ready Appreciate no you. Box. Love.